So today I wanted to do a few words on um, basically two-stroke versus four-stroke power, right? And I know this is a hotly debated topic, and, and I'm and I'm and I'm here to tell you that um, two strokes are not better than four strokes, and four strokes are not better than two strokes. Um, in my opinion, they they are just different tools for um, different jobs, and beyond that, they are also just uh, different flavors uh, to suit people's preferences. And so, uh, the 30 second summary of this video is that they are both awesome and you should probably own a two stroke and a four stroke, uh, at least at some point. Uh, but beyond that, uh, what this video is about is to look at some technical data on the differences between two strokes and four strokes and specifically looking at motor output, which is effectively the biggest component of two stroke and four stroke signatures. So we're going to jump into power and torque curves, and I'm going to try to make it as non-technical as possible and just really try to share what the different characteristics of each bike is and what makes each bike uh, amazing and unique in their own way. So let's jump right into it. We're going to look at power and torque curves primarily. And uh, our first uh, our first chart here is a is a awesome graphic provided by JD Jetting. And if you don't know who JD Jetting is or what they do, you should definitely check them out. They make awesome products. Um, I'm a you know I'm a customer of JD Jetting, and I've been very happy with their products. We're going to use their information just because the two charts that I'm going to show you are probably the most descriptive charts or a collection of data on two strokes and four strokes that I think exist uh, on the web. And we're gonna really look at these two charts and we're gonna really dissect the differences between, uh, between the six bikes shown. And what's great about these two charts is they focus on one brand, which is KTM, and they focus on the three most popular two stroke models, or, or I should say displacements, and the three most popular four stroke displacements. And, um, yeah, with this landscape of bikes, you get a, a huge range of of just characteristics of, of of motorcycles, and I just love this data, <clears throat> and I wanted to share the way I interpret this data with um, you know with people to help them understand really the differences between all six bikes and why all six bikes are really awesome. So, okay, let's get started. So I think a good place to start is just to look at overall power of each model. And so what is power? Well, power is measured in horsepower. And so what is horsepower? Horsepower is just a force multiplied times a rotational velocity, right? So in this case, it's torque times RPM. So to make things relatively simple, right? Horsepower is just the amount of torque multiplied by a constant multiplied by an RPM. So by that definition or by that equation, um, if you have a motor that revs higher, it will always produce more horsepower, okay? You could have two motors that produce the same power with one motor producing very little torque and spinning really quickly, or with one, another motor producing a lot of torque and spinning very slowly. So power, although it's a, a good indicator of you know, what you can get out of a, a motor, it's, it's not fully descriptive. It doesn't tell the whole story because you're combining two very important variables, right, in, in one into one number. So that's where we want to look at both output power, but we also want to look at torque curves. So keeping in mind power only tells part of the story, let's look at two really common bikes, a KTM 300 two-stroke and a KTM 450 four-stroke. Here you can see they produce basically the same amount of power at basically the same RPMs. Next, we look at a 252 stroke and a 254 stroke. This is where things get really interesting, right? So a 252 stroke makes 48 horsepower, right under 9,000 RPM, and a 254 stroke makes 38 horsepower, all the way at 13,000 RPM. So this is a great example. What I mean by that is RPMs take time to build. And in, in similar engines, like dirt bike engines, regardless if they're two strokes or four strokes, it's going to take longer, it's going to take more time to get to 13,000 RPM than it is to 9,000 RPM. So that 250 two-stroke making 48 horsepower at 9,000 RPM is going to happen 
much faster. It's going to happen much sooner than that 254 stroke making its max power at 38 horsepower at 13,000 RPM. That's why the 252 stroke basically hits you in the face and it hits super hard versus a 254 stroke. Not only does a 252 stroke make more power, but it makes it way more aggressively and way faster, way lower in the RPM range. Now let's add the 354 stroke to the mix. You can see the 354 stroke makes 45 horsepower, slightly less than the two stroke 250, and it makes it at a little over 10,000 RPM. So yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the 354 stroke is not as powerful as a 252 stroke, and it makes it more it makes the power more gradually, and it holds that power pretty flat at a pretty large RPM range, which makes the 350 really produce really usable power. Now, let's compare a 354 stroke to a 454 stroke. The 454 stroke makes 52 horsepower at 9,000 RPM, and the 354 stroke makes 45 horsepower at slightly over 10,000 RPM. Simply put, the 450 makes more power much faster than the 354 stroke. And, well, that's what it feels like. For now, let's not worry about the 200 XC. It clearly makes the least amount of power. Now to get a deeper understanding of power and how that power develops in an engine, let's split up this chart into three sections, low, mid, and high. Low RPMs, mid RPMs, and high RPMs. Generally, you can think of low RPMs as low speed riding, mid RPMs as where usually where you want to be when you're trail riding, and high RPMs when you're really moving. That's not exactly accurate, but that's a generalization, and you can think of it that way. If you look at the low end, nothing too exciting is happening. The smaller bikes, the 200 and the 250 are pretty low, and the bigger bikes are higher, and the 350 is just in the middle. What's interesting is that the 254 stroke is, well, significantly lower than the 200 XC. The mid-range is where things get really interesting. You can see all three two-strokes hit their maximum power right under 9,000 RPM, basically at the same time. What's also interesting is the 450 also hits its max power right about 9,000 RPM, just a little bit higher than the 300 XC. The other four strokes, however, they don't hit their high power until way higher in their RPM range. The high RPMs are where the four strokes really shine. The two strokes, well, they're done. They're totally cooked after 10,000 RPM. At high RPMs, the four strokes keep chugging along. The 450 continues to make good power all the way to 11,500. The 350 sings along well all the way to past 13,000 with a really nice flat spot between 9,000 and 11,000 RPM and then begins to sign off after 11,000 all the way to 13,000. Now the 254 stroke, well, it just keeps building power. It just keeps building power all the way to almost 14,000 RPM with a really nice flat spot between 11,000 RPM and 13,000 RPM. This is where this motor really shines. You have a lot of usable power with a really broad range of RPMs, but you have to get way up there in the RPM range to take advantage of that. Now the 350, the 350 is pretty magical. I mean, it does sign off um, after 11,000 RPM. It's, it does start to decrease in power, but it has a huge, flat, usable power range from the mid-range all the way to high RPMs, from, I don't know, 8,500 RPM all the way to 11,000 RPM. The power really doesn't change a whole lot. That's what makes that bike so rideable. Now that we've looked at power at individual RPMs, let's look at the entire power curve. Let's look at the area under each power curve and see what that tells us about each bike. Here's the entire area of the power curve for a 254 stroke. You can see it builds power very gradually and has a huge usable RPM range from 3,500 RPM all the way to redline at almost 14,000 RPM. This bike is nice and easy to ride, builds power gradually, and doesn't really surprise you at any point in the power curve. Here's the power curve for a 252 stroke. It creates a huge surge of power from 4,000 RPM all the way to 8,500 RPM, and then signs off after 10,000 RPM. Basically, it's a huge, linear pull of power that happens very quickly and then and then dies off just as quickly. Here are the power curves for a 254 stroke and a 252 stroke overlaid. I love this graphic. 
This basically shows the difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke. Same displacements, completely different characters. The 252 stroke builds power quickly, aggressively, and then signs off. With a 254 stroke builds power gently and doesn't sign off till way higher in the RPM range. Basically, a 254 stroke has to be ridden hard and all the way in the upper RPM ranges from 11,000 to 13,000 RPMs to get the most power out of it. Whereas a 252 stroke just punches you in the face and creates power immediately and very sharply. Let's add the 350 into the mix. The 350 almost matches the 252 strokes power, but not quite. However, it really stretches out the power band well into the high RPM ranges. Better yet, it basically stays flat in power from 8500 RPM all the way to 11,000 RPM, which gives you a really nice usable band of power. What this graphic shows is that the 354 stroke really is the middle ground between a hard-hitting aggressive bike and a much more mild civilized bike like the 254 stroke. Now let's look at a 252 stroke and a 302 stroke. If you were to look at the power bands of both these bikes you would think that a 302 stroke outperforms a 250 all the way across the power band and technically it does. You can see from this graphic the 302 stroke power band overlays the entirety of the 252 stroke power band all all the way across all the RPM range. What this graphic doesn't show you, and what no power band graphic will show you, is how quickly a motor revs to a certain RPM. This is where the 250 is very exciting. It almost matches the power output of a 302 stroke, but it revs so much faster than a 302 stroke because of a lighter piston. This is what makes the 252 stroke one of my favorite bikes. Let's look at these power bands a little closer, specifically the 302 stroke. The 302 stroke is arguably one of the most popular trail bikes ever made. It creates an awesome hit of power that's very linear and then dies off relatively quickly. If you look closely, the 300 almost matches the 450 four strokes power band. Well, at least to about 9,000 RPM. Then the 450 really continues to pull hard where the 300 just dies off. And in reality, for trail riding, you don't need those extra RPMs. Those extra RPMs for the 454 stroke, they pay off at high speed and on the motocross track. But in the trail and in the gnarly, the 300, well, it's really all you need. Now let's add the 202 stroke. The 202 stroke, well, it just makes less power. But what's not great is it doesn't make the power in such a linear fashion as the 300. And it has a little burp of power right at 7,000 RPMs that carries all the way to red line. What this graphic doesn't show is that the 200 revs really quickly. Just like the 250 revs faster than the 300, the 200 revs faster than the 250. And it creates this surge of power super aggressively, super quickly, which makes the bike really fun to ride. And that makes the bike have a very unique character. So don't discount the 200. It's pretty awesome. It's just not a 300. It's just different. Now that we've looked at power, let's look just at torque. Remember, torque is just a component of power, right? You can think of torque as the amount of force your rear tire is putting onto the dirt at a certain motor RPM. It's not really that simple, but that's just a way to think about it. Torque is super useful to get you up and over obstacles and to just get you to accelerate quickly. In many situations, torque is more important than horsepower. First, let's look at overall torque figures. In red are the two strokes and in blue are the four strokes. Let's start with a 300XC. It's arguably the king of torque as it makes the most torque right off idle at 4000 RPM. And it carries strong torque all the way to its max at 33. It beats every bike in how much torque it makes. However, interestingly enough, the 450 makes almost as much torque and it makes it sooner. In addition, it has a much smoother torque curve than the 300XC and it carries torque well after the 300 is signed off. That's interesting because the 450 isn't really known as a bike that's good for the gnarly. Well, there's other reasons for that. The 354 stroke, well, it's just stuck in the middle again. It makes really good torque and it makes it for a huge range of RPM. It doesn't produce any kind of crazy torque figures, but it does it in a very consistent way on its way up and on its way down. The 200XC hands down beats the 250SX in torque. It makes more torque all the way across its usable RPM range and you could argue it makes it in a more consistent manner. Now here is an unfair comparison. Look at the 300XC and look at the 250SXF. 
The 300 XC is known as a bike that excels in the gnarly, where low RPMs, low speed, and a lot of torque is needed. And the 250SX, well, it really shines in flowy open trails. Well, if you look closely, you can see the 300 XC makes more torque right off idle than the 250SXF ever makes through its entire RPM range. Doesn't matter how much you rev the 250SX, it basically never makes more torque than the 300 XC does right off idle. Now, let's look at one of my favorite bikes, the 252 stroke. The 252 stroke is basically a baby 300, except it revs a lot quicker and it's a lot more involving to ride. You can get the same out of a 250 as you can a 300. You just have to ride it harder and rev it a lot more. Well, there you go guys. My two stroke versus four stroke video. Keep in mind, both bikes are awesome. You can't go wrong with either. They're just different. If you can own both, I would strongly suggest it. You will get better by riding both bikes and learning the subtleties of each type of bike. The two stroke will teach you something the four stroke can't and same thing with the four stroke. You'll learn something on the four stroke that there's no way the two stroke will teach you. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that notification button.